On Turtle Island, copper is important to many people. When the continental glaciers retreated northward over 11,000 years ago, the scoured earth revealed outcroppings of copper ore. Archaeologists have discovered that the first people of Turtle Island began extracting copper from the Great Lakes region by at least 7,500 years ago. The Ice Age lasted for many thousands of years. When it ended, there was new land to explore and live upon. The people who moved into the Great Lakes region after the Ice Age came from elsewhere upon Turtle Island. They came from the southeast coastal areas and the southwest plains. Copper is mentioned in Anishinaabe legends. When Nanabuju fought against the giant underwater snakes, he used a piece of copper to defeat them. Copper symbolized the power of the Thunderbirds. Outcroppings on the shores of Lake Superior, as well as on Isle Royale, were used for copper extraction for several thousand years. Large rocks were used to hammer out nuggets from the load vein. These rocks were carried from many kilometers away for this specialized purpose. Copper was cold hammered, not smelted. It was used for tools and ornaments, for personal use and trade. Items made from Isle Royale copper have been found in archaeological sites hundreds of kilometers away on the southeast coast of Turtle Island in what is now Georgia. In some colonial era treaty negotiations, copper was discussed. When the Superior Treaty of 1850 was being arranged by William Robinson for the British Canadian government, Ojibwe chiefs argued that what was beneath the ground was worth more than even the timber and harvesting wealth upon the surface. Unfortunately, those arguments didn't make it into the final copy of the treaty. The official signed document doesn't mention subsurface rights. Copper conducts electricity. In modern times, this natural ability of copper due to its electron configuration is worth trillions of dollars.